Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I B reporting for The Media Speaks. And we have a ton of news for all of you. My wonderful friend Giselle asked me once if, uh, if there was any kind of racial motivation to me being against uh, illegal immigration, and there isn't. And I told her that if Canada was to do the exact same thing, that I, in fact, would stand by Canada's right as a sovereign nation to do so. And most people in Canada are, in fact, right. Well, it's happening, and I'm in favor of it. Uh, before I get to the story, though, I am going to say that I'm not in favor of any kind of law enforcement that goes after drugs. Because I do not believe that drugs should be illegal. I think that drugs should be legal and carefully monitored. Um, I think that countries that have moved in this direction have less people on drugs before I get that stupid comment. And I think it's a lot more peaceful society when they just let the idiots that want to use this stuff use it. Plain and simple. They have less idiots using it than we do, by the way. Our laws are in no way, shape, matter, or form about keeping us safe. All laws pertaining to drugs are about making the prison system and uh, other big industries in this country even bigger. So I'm not happy about the fact of the, uh, of the, the whole drug thing. Oh, they're bringing marijuana into America. Good! Hope you guys enjoy it. Smoke it well. I could care less. Um, U.S. Coast Guard partners with Canadian Royal Mounted Police to conduct cross-border law enforcement. Oh, but we're prejudiced. We just, ah, Sam just hates those white people. And no, that's not dedicated to Giselle. Giselle's never accused me of hating uh, Mexicans. She was just saying that she thought that a lot of it came from prejudiced uh, stances from some people, not me. Um, while that might be true, I'm sure the vast majority are, in fact, on my side with this one. It's nothing to do with prejudiced against anybody. But we're going to go with it. Let's hate on some white people today. Oh, wait a minute. Most people would consider me white. Let's hate on some Mexicans today. No, oh, wait a minute. My dad's mother was a quarter Mexican. See where it all falls apart? The whole prejudice thing isn't happening. Sorry, Shazarazad and your stupid hat. Uh, members from Coast Guard Station, Eastport, Emmy, and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Maritime Unit in St. Andrews, New Brunswick, conducted a joint law enforcement patrol along St. Croix River in August 26th and 27th. The patrol is part of the newly approved Integrated Cross-Border Maritime Hate White People Law Enforcement Operation. Well, maybe it didn't say that which strengthens maritime security in shared U.S. and Canadian waterways by allowing law enforcement officers to freely cross the border and jointly enforce laws and regulations. Working with the U.S. Coast Guard puts us at a great advantage for fresh pursuit of vessels crossing into the U.S. and back into Canada, said Sebastian Rural, a Royal Mounted Police officer participating in exercises. The learning curve from the maritime operations is steep, but we are all learning quickly. Oh, but, you know, that's, that's not what it's a boot. It's all a boot to prejudice, right? I'm so sick of that. So, I mean, yeah, it is nice to know that uh, we don't have people entering the country illegally from Canada either because, let's face it, a lot of people entering the country illegal are not doing the harmless things like marijuana. A lot of people are trafficking in um, what is quickly becoming... The human slavery, and a lot of it does come, in fact, from Canada. It's a good idea to keep track of who's coming into your country, no matter what color they are. I don't think it should be impossible to get into the country, and I don't think it should be one of those things where it costs a family a fortune to do so. But I do think that we need to know who is in our country, and I think most other countries are much more strict with it than we are, as they should uh, this is TheNation.com. Now, I'm not going to get too excited about this. they got uh, Santa Claus up here. A protesting activist firings. Walmart, and workers plan Walmart workers plan the biggest mobilization since Black Friday. Well, I hate to be the one to tell you this, Wally World employees, but your last Black Friday uh, boycott was an abysmal failure. I went out there and I tried to support you boneheads, and most of you were working. Uh, they, they were at the, uh, go like go thumbs down the video I have by this uh, the correct views Black Friday. I went to go and uh, I wanted to I wanted to go and see if I could tie it up. So I hate Walmart. I wanted to go to Walmart on Black Friday and 
find the few employees or managers I could find and tie them up asking questions. I wanted to donate money to the people picketing outside. I wanted to do anything I could to hurt Walmart, which has done nothing but hurt our country. And uh, unfortunately, the pansies went to work. So let's hope they really do this. But if you think I'm coming to support you, I'm not, because you're probably just going to end up going to work and I'm going to end up making a stupid video to post. But here goes. In the interest of stopping Walmart, where we still have some semblance of a country left, and that can be argued, Walmart workers and supporters plan to mount, like Canadian police, plan to mount protests in 15 cities Thursday, a mobilization that the union-backed group, R. Walmart, expects to be its largest since last November's Black Friday strike. This week's rallies follow the August 22nd civil disobedience action at which the campaign announced a Labor Day deadline for Walmart to raise its wages to at least $25,000 per year and reverse the termination of 20 workers who participated in, the, participated in the June strike. God bless them! I hope to God alive that it happens. It is time for us to stop ripping off our uh, employees in this country. Oh, your, your worth isn't work, worth much. We can find anybody to do it. Good. You know what that does? That puts them on the welfare rolls, and instead of Walmart paying them, which they can afford to do, you pay the difference in their food stamps, in their health care, and then all the stuff they can't get because you are letting Walmart off the hook. Because you watching this, you, you hardworking person watching this, you want to pay them, right? And I just changed your mind, didn't I? Yeah, Walmart should be paying them. The CEO should not be making 350 times as much as his regular employees. And sorry, it shouldn't be. They shouldn't be getting their stuff at the lowest bidder from China, which is already racking their prices down, and then making it even worse by implementing low wages for these people. It's sickening, and that's why if you shop there, you are hurting the country, you're scum. I go there as little as humanly possible, and that's only a, like an absolute emergency if my mom needs something, or in some instance like that, who's disabled and a widow. That's what it takes for me to shop there. As the nation has reported, the nearly 80 all, war, all Walmart, our Walmart members have been disciplined by the company since returning to work from the June walkout. Walk our Walmart's response to the alleged illegal retaliation has included protest rallies, pressure on Yahoo, CEO and Walmart board member Marissa Mayer, and outreach to members of Congress. It goes on that the campaign has filed charges with the National Labor Retali Relations Board, alleging that the discipline violated labor, federal label, labor law. Walmart has denied any wrongdoing. A spokesman told the nation last month that no associates were disciplined for participation in specific protests. Well, that's interesting since they interviewed the person that it has happened to. Thursday's actions will include a march through downtown Los Angeles to a site of a proposed Walmart in Chinatown and a demonstration in Washington, D.C., where all sides are awaiting word on whether Mayor Vince Gray will veto a bill passed by city council in July but formally sent to his desk last Friday that would require, quote, large retailers uh, like Walmart to pay employees at least $12.50 an hour in total compensation. Good. Thursday's actions are so planned for cities in the East, West, South, Midwest, Baton Rouge, Boston, Chicago, Cincinnati, Denver, Dallas, Miami, Minneapolis, New York, Orlando, Sacramento, San Francisco, and Seattle, everywhere except Ohio, where, of course, we don't care if we get paid anything at all. Basically, they're trying to grow this and show that they are a force, because once they can prove that they are a force, then in essence, they can start making demands for a, a decent wage, which they are doing. And again, I am very, very happy to see that this is happening. Because we, it's not a matter of people say, oh, this is, a, this is a, an, a, an entry-level job. We don't have any more jobs in this country anymore. There are no opportunities. I'm going to tell you a story. I took a gentleman home today, a friend of mine. I ain't going to say where he works. But he needed a ride home because he couldn't afford a cab. He drove, well, he got a ride of 55 miles from where he is to go to the job that he went to. Went to the job, couldn't get a ride home, waited, and now keep in mind, he had to be there at 11 in the morning, waited until I got off work around 3 in the morning to drive him to his house. 
And you know what he said? He said, you know, I'm working as hard as I can. I need an extra $40 so that I can pick up turntables and start doing parties and stuff. I took this job. I came all the way across town for it. Um, he had, I can't say why, but he ended up not making... I, I protect my sources here. He ended up not making any money and said, you know what I'm going to end up having to do is just make ends meet, pay my rent, and I'll probably have to sell molly or pot to make ends meet. This is where our tax dollars go. People go to work. They go to work. They work hard. They do their best. They make nothing. And they start selling drugs. I know some of the G's and the hood and the yo yo yo. I know they think it's cool to sell drugs. By they, I don't mean color. I mean stupidity of mindset. But, um... That's, that's not the norm, guys. That, that is not the norm. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's, um, it's, it's, it's the exception. Most people want to make a decent amount of money, and when they can't, then they'll do things. And I, I did the same thing. I, I, I was a cab driver, and uh, Fred Nero, um, greedy bastard, paid nothing. I've told this story many times on air. And I would have to run prostitutes and drugs, and I would have to, I would drive to where I knew drug dealers lived, so that I could run product for them, so that my wife and I could eat that night. A couple times, I didn't even make enough to eat. I made sure she did. So I've been there. And that's why I'm saying that you can, uh, you can laugh at this if you want, but tomorrow's drug dealers are today's uh, underpaid employees. That is a matter of fact. That is a correct view. Infowars.com, CIA-trained Al-Qaeda cell to enter Syria. U.S. sanctioned 50-man group to sneak over border into Syria. The part of this story that I'm going to read to you, for those of you that just went more Syrian news, I'm not going to get into all this uh, squabbling here. I'm going to get into something that Lindsey Graham said. Graham added that he hoped the opposition would be given, quote, a chance to speak directly to the American people to ally fear that rebel forces are dominated by al-Qaeda extremists. They're not trying to replace one dictator, Assad, who has been brutal, to only have the Al-Qaeda run Syria, Graham said. Only. As in maybe Graham thinks Syria should be running, you know, by, by a few Al-Qaeda members. Just not all Al-Qaeda members. Now, I, I know I, I'm not trying to attack uh, 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 what was obviously an off-the-cuff comment. But what I'm saying is they know that they're giving Al-Qaeda at least a small foothold by doing this. Maybe they're gambling that they won't get a bigger foothold because they did this, but that hasn't been the case in Afghanistan. We destroyed the, the country of Libya. Libya had a higher standard than the U.S. in many ways, and we destroyed it. So why should we believe that this time would be any different? Uh, as I've been saying all along, leave evil people to do evil things and don't pick an evil side, and in this case, Pretty much all the sides in it are evil. The only people that aren't evil are the ones that are being butchered in the country by both sides. So we should fund them so that, you know, we can pick the side that we like the best to kill people. Because we don't want people that we don't like killing people. We only want people that we do like killing people. Guys, Bud K. The Bud K catalog. This is great. How many of you end up swarmed in the fall when, uh, when the seasons change? All the bugs go where it's warm. You just turn your heat on and guess where they go? Yeah, you end up with that cats infested with fleas. Cost 75 bucks at the, uh, at the uh, vet. Yeah, I've been there. Guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Click on Bud K. Now, make sure you click on Bud K that way because that's what uh, generates money for us. They help us and then we can have a better show and we can give you a better show to watch. Um, this will prevent a lot of that from happening. The OD Mosquito headset, a headnet, $2.99. Uh, that way you can go into heavily swarmed rooms and not have to worry about them getting in your hair and your eyes. They've got uh, AMK Ben's 100% insect, insect repellent, $5.99. They've got the Sawyer Fisherman Formula Picaridian. Uh, I mean, that's something that's new. I've not seen that prior. $7.99. And they've got everything here. They have the most effective Sawyer Constant Paramount Tick Repellent. 
Do you ever hear of that before? I can barely even read it. Did you look it up? It's seven ninety nine. Ticks gone. And forget ticks. You you, you can worry about that. We're about bed bugs. We're about roaches. You use this, you won't have any more ticks. Gone. It is uh, rave reviews from everyone that's tried it. And again, in some parts of the nation, ticks are a huge problem this time of year. Uh, if you live in one of the parts of the nation, don't know what I'm talking about, you're fortunate. For those of you that do, go to Bud K by clicking on the Media Speaks. Pick this up and you won't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, this is from Zero Hedge. Poland confiscates half of private pension funds to cut the sovereign national debt. Now remember when they did this to Cyprus, everyone was saying it was a one-off thing. God love a celestial CK. She said um, that, uh, you know, I shouldn't be so anti-bank. I am proudly the most anti-bank person you'll ever meet. I don't bank at all. How's that? Zero. I use money orders. Real easy. Eliminated. Done. If your check gets sent to a bank, fine. Don't use the bank for anything else. Done. Get your money cashed immediately so that they can't take your money out. Do not save in a bank because they will take your money. Forget the FDIC, FDIC insurance. It means nothing. The, the governments are taking money to cover debt that was caused by central banking, which countries should not even have, because central banking only works to help the 1%. Um, and I, again, if you, if you, if you want to battle me on that, uh, ask me for sources and I'll fill them up. Uh, I'll fill your comment lane with them. Yeah? Don't tempt me. Uh, I've done many shows on this. It's not a topic that's open for debate. Zero Hedge, while the world was glued to the developments in the middle, Mediterranean in the past week, Poland took a page straight out of Rahm Emanuel's playbook, and in order to not let a crisis go to waste, it says, announced quietly that it would transfer to the state, i.e. confiscate, the bulk of assets owned by the country's private pension funds, many of them owned by such foreign firms as PIMCO, Parent, Alalands, AXA, Generali, ING, and Avia, without offering any compensation. In effect, the state just nationalized roughly half of the private sector pension fund assets, although it had a more politically correct name for it. They called it pension overhaul. Remember the haircut when they took the people's money from Cyprus? Well, they, they, don't, they don't do haircuts in Poland. They do pension overhauls. For those of you that listen to Usher and you're just too stupid to know what I'm saying here, what I'm saying is they went ahead, took half of the money that was saved for pensions and gave it to the country of Poland to pay off debts incurred by the country of Poland. Do you know who didn't have that happen to them? People that listen to the correct views in Poland and who weren't banking, those people are loving me right now because they're twice as rich as they would be. By way of background, Poland has a hybrid pension system. As Reuters explains, mandatory contributions are made into both the state pension vehicle known as ZUS, ZUS and the private funds, which are collectively known by the Polish acronym OFE. Bonds make up roughly half the private fund portfolio with the rest and company stocks. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Donald Tusk or with said private funds within the state guaranteed system, the guaranteed system would have their bond holdings transferred to the state pension vehicle but keep their equity holdings. I'm sure that makes them feel a lot better. So, you know, you didn't actually get a hose. You just got a little bit hosed. People, let me tell you what. If you bank, you're asking for this to happen to you. Plain and simple. It's what you want to happen. And uh, I, I, I've told Christelle this before, my, my lovely behind-the-scenes queen. I've told her, if, if you really want to be sick, keep drinking pop. And, and trust me, you'll be sick. If you really want to get ripped off, keep banking. Don't worry. Just keep on banking and you too will be ripped off. Um, this is from abcnews.net.au. Typhoon Manyai hits Japan raising fears about the Fukushima nuclear plant. This is dreadful. Um, again, it's going to take 40 years to decommission the Fukushima plant. But don't worry. It's perfectly safe to have the Olympics there in 2020, even though this is spewing radiation that is already causing cancers that are worse than what we saw during Hiroshima and Nagasaki, in that it's speeding up much more fast because there's much more radiation in the air than there was then. 
I'm not talking about the blast. I'm talking about the nuclear, the death from a uh, nuclear fallout here. Typhoon Menyai has hit central Japan as officials issued a special warning of heavy rain amid fears that the storm could go on to hit the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. The typhoon is generating heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 140 kilometers an hour. It says it is tracking northeast along the main Japanese island of Honshu at a speed of 45 kilometers per hour and was expected to pass over Fukushima this afternoon. TEPCO workers at the plant are battening down the site as the typhoon approaches. They have attached ropes to outdoor piping and pumps and are using large weights to try to prevent cranes from possibly toppling over. They are so brilliant over there. I mean, weights and ropes to tie a crane. Well, well guys, what do you want me to say? I mean, anybody that lives in high wind areas know uh, that you don't leave cranes up like that. And you do more than tie them with rigging when you're running a melted down nuclear power plant. It's, 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 so many things are hitting them. They're so unprepared that they, they literally have absolutely no idea here what they're doing or how to do what little it is that they think that they can do. They are totally lost in every way. It goes on, with torrential rains expected this afternoon, there are fears that more of the contaminated water will seep into the groundwater and flow into the sea. Crews have struggled to contain the nuclear plant after the earthquake, of course. The typhoon has already brought heavy rain and strong winds to the south and east before hitting Japan. Public broadcaster NHK said a woman in her 70s was missing following a landslide. That's not good. I saw another article in Fukushima Diary that said that they had uh, brought extra um, patrols to look to to prevent running water. So if they if they see running water going into the ocean, the, I guess he's to holler halt, and the, the water is going to stop. We've learned a lot of things. We've learned in Japan that you can just spray your house down and wash the radiation away. And if you believe that, you're an idiot. Guys, the last thing I'm going to get to, NASA.gov. Um, this is interesting. For those of you that know I like to end with science, I'm going to do so tonight. The Voyager, I would say, is the direction that I'm amazed that more people aren't going into because they do such wonderful things. Um, just in the exploration. When we pass this barrier I'm about to read about, the Voyager transmitted from the deepest parts of space we've ever been to, I'm going to get to it, a shrieking, screaming sound, which is actually the ionization plasma sounds uh, picked up by the Voyager. Think about the first time, you know, you hear these noises from space, you're what? You know, what are you going to think? NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft officially is the first human-made object to venture into inter interstellar space. The 36-year-old probe is about 12 million miles from our sun. A new and unexpected data indicate that Voyager 1 has been traveling for about one year through plasma or ionized gas present in the space between stars. Voyager is in, in the transitional region immediately outside the solar bubble, where some effects from our sun are still evident. Very few. He's so, so far out that there's almost no effect from our sun at all anymore. A report on the analysis of this new data, an effort led by Don Garnett and the Plasma Wave Science Team at the University of Iowa City, Iowa, is published in Thursday's edition of the journal Science. Now, we, now that we have new key data, we believe that this is mankind's historic leap into interstellar space, said Ed Stone, a Voyager project scientist based at the California Institute of Technology, Pasadena. The Voyager team needed time to analyze those observations and make sense of them, but we can now answer the question that we've all been asking, are we there yet? Yes. Excellent news! Um, it says, we literally jumped out of our seats when we saw the oscillations in our data. I skipped the science part to prove that this happens. Uh, go look it up, Infowars.com, Voyager. It says, uh, they showed us the spacecraft was in an entirely new region comparable to what we expected in interstellar space, and totally different from in the sonic bubble, Gurnett said. Clearly, we had passed through the helios, heliopause, which is a long hypothesized boundary between the solar plasma and interstellar plasma. 
It says the new plasma suggested a time a time frame consistent with abrupt durable changes in the density of electro and energetic particles that were first detected August 25th. The Voyager team generally accepts this to be the date that we achieved interstellar travel. That was 2012. The charged particle and plasma changes were that what would be expected during the heliopause. Yeah, the shrieking. So there you go, guys. Uh, when, when we focus on something other than blowing each other up, then we can do things like reach parts of space that we've only hypothesized about. Wondered what might have been out there. Well, now everything it sends back is going to be new information. Um, 17 and a half seconds, uh, hours, it takes radio waves to reach us. And they're so faint that they're almost undetectable. So uh, off they go. I do have one question, though, for those of you that would be able to answer it. Why can we trust radio data that we get from uh, other sources that are further away, but yet we can't get data from this? If a radio wave travels forever, then why can't we pick it up, theoretically, for, until it hits something? I'd love to know. Guys, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Go there. Check out the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Please donate to this show. The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. That's how you donate to the show, and every penny that you give me goes to a better show, goes to a computer that doesn't suck, that kind of thing. Also, please go to the Charity Connection and uh, donate money to Miss Mobley Christ, the wonderful person who has been raising money for people who are sick, is in fact herself beating lung cancer. So it's up to us to make sure she continues to beat it, and then she can get back on the horse and help all the other sick people that she always helps. <laughs> Thank you for listening, friends. Good night, and God bless.